It's 5.15 p.m. on a Saturday, and you are all in this room. Round of applause. You are almost there. It is almost margarita time. We'll be right there with you. But we are going to try and bring the energy and uh, kind of mess with the format a little bit and have more of a discussion and uh, open dialogue with the audience. Feel free to shout things out, raise your hand, of course, all that fun stuff, because um, we want you to be part of this. You are part of this. Um, just before we get, begin, um, just a, uh, before we do intros, um, just a, a poll of um, music supervisors in the room, aspiring music supervisors. Cool. And composers, musicians, artists. Cool, music licensors, publishers, labels, yada yada. Cool. Scummy ad people like myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, not you. Uh, my name is Michael Gross. I am very thrilled to be here. Um, uh, I am the executive creative producer for Squeaky Clean Studios, which is a music and sound studio. Uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, Austin, New York, Sydney, Melbourne, Australia. Uh, we work with brands and branded content uh, and all that fun stuff. Everything, holistic music, all the stuff. Um, I'm also the lead music supervisor. There's six of us on staff. Uh, on the supervision side. Um, I uh, am extremely honored and grateful to be joined on stage by the two best dressed people at this event. Alex Helton, 206 Music. Yeah, like a fan club, that was amazing. And of course, Sharice Allen from Netflix. Thank you. And, um, Loosely, we kind of talked about uh, sort of assigning roles here of, uh, of kind of the different perspectives of speaking about music and articulating about music supervision. And um, Alex is an artist and, and runs a, 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 a boutique sync and, an, and a publishing company and does all of those things as a polymath. I love that word. Um, and, and I love it now, too. I've never heard that. <laughs> sort of is going to represent the artist side of, of the conversation when he uh, chooses to do so. And, and Sharice is uh, maybe our client, our, our uh, you know, marketing um, lead, um, can speak from like sort of the origination of a brief and a project and things like that. And Squeaky Clean is kind of sort of a company that's in between those two worlds and is often the conduit for those things. Um, anything you want to jump in there? I sort of railroaded the intro part and we were going to like he do really did. intros. I know, I had this whole thing practiced, Michael. Yeah, we were, uh, uh, there's not just like the design of the thing on the screen because we're going to kind of take you through a little bit of a show and tell, sort of, which Alex has designed. Thank you, Alex. First of many thank yous. Um, this panel is called The Language of Music, parentheses, supervision. Um, we wanted to get together and just have a little bit of a conversation about like um, how to help all of us articulate around music. So, so much of the time, uh, a client or a collaborator or a creative or whomever, you know, they have a vision in their, in their head for what they want it to sound like, but often, you know, getting to that point of realizing what that vision is, is a long and winding um, cliche uh, road. Um, and um, by no means is this meant to be like a doctor prescription thing when you go to the doctor's office and you have the, the, the clipboard and you fill out the things, right? But we do hope that there will be some, uh, hopefully you, you, know, you can use some of these as tools when you're working on a brief, answering a brief, writing a brief, interpreting a brief, um, to help all of us kind of get to there. And it is about communication. And, um, Stephanie says something on stage during her, the, the panel with Issa about how this is a collaborative art form, um, which I loved, uh, that really kind of, um, and because it is collaborative, um, 
it's about the effectiveness of communication to help us all get to that place. Um, and I know I'm being long-winded, and everybody wants to hear from our wonderful panelists, but I just want to share a, uh, a personal anecdote very quickly um, about um, taking my son to school the other day, and uh, he was he's seven. Um, I got him a tape player, so he's like kind of learning about analog tape, kind of listening before he gets into the, you know, the hell that is Spotify and all that. Oh God, I just did it. <laughs> Slamming. This is in perp on the internet. Oh boy. <laughs> Hire me one day, Spotify. Um, and uh, he requested Katy Perry's Roar to, to, on the way to school, and we were listening to it. And I asked him, what do, you, what do you love about the song? What do you like about it? And he didn't answer, and he, he sort of got a little flustered. Um, and I was like, well, is it the beat? I mean, do you, is it the, the lyric? Is it the vocal? Like, do you like the message? Um, you know, and, and he kind of didn't know how to say it. And then finally, he kind of got it out of him. He just said, it just makes me feel good, Dad. Um, oh. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and yes, music makes us feel good. It's undefinable, and it's magic, and all those things. But um, we are problem solvers by nature in this role as supervisors and makers. Um, and um, we, in the, in the end, we are hoping to get emotion out of an audience, right? That emotion may be good, maybe make you feel good, it maybe should make you feel bad, maybe should make you feel confused, conflicted, but we are an element, music is an element in moving picture, moving media, to help realize that vision. Um, so with that, I am going to ask Alex to save me from this rope that I've hung myself on already. <laughs> he did a really good job of hanging hey, himself, though. <laughs> um, we have options. Are we moving straight into the... I think we shall. All right, let's yeah. do it. Okay. All right. Go ahead. The way that we want to do this at first, we're going to move into it, is um, from our side of things, the reason that it's so important to know the language of music is because we're often speaking with people who don't know the language of music. Um, and so they say things that don't necessarily help the creator or the person who runs a licensing agency uh, find those pieces that like meet what they need. Um, for example, can we get a song that sounds like TikTok? What does that sound like, guys? <laughs> And we got, can we just like order viral? Is that a thing? Something that hits different and lives rent free in your head? Um, so it's things like that that you have to navigate. Um, in this instance, you probably don't, like that's not the actual translation, but you might want to find something upbeat around like 110 to 130 beats per minute. You might want to find something that has like a percussive element that makes you dance, but the instrumentation is limited. It's supposed to be catchy, but not distracting. Um, yeah, so like, <laughs> so that's a solution to that, if you, if you ever get that question. Um, here's another. We want an extremely sad instrumental, a real tearjerker. Um, and so again, like this doesn't tell, if, if you were gonna send this for a custom to a producer, this doesn't tell the producer what they need to do. It, it, like they, have, they could do anything with this, but if you can talk to the end user of this music to, to get a little more information from them, um, you might end up with like a solution like, we want music with emotive, lush strings and sparse piano in a minor key. Just something that, you know, brings you down and maybe it's not <sighs> Dido's, what is that, thank you? That's a sad song, right? And this is something that you would like, we, this wouldn't necessarily wouldn't be client facing even, right? Like this would be, you'd get that in yeah. an email and then you'd go away and speak to your team and be like, this is what we're gonna do. And then they're gonna hear it and it's gonna do that thing for them. Precisely. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you take what they give you in the common tongue as I so, you know. <laughs> nicely put it and then you can change it to the language of music when you approach when you are the composer and someone comes to you you can translate that yourself in your head or if you're the licensing agent you're going to your 
artists, your producers who are on hand, and you're like, hey, I need you to make this. It's due at 5.30, go. Um, <laughs> this is what you can tell them that will actually result in, in results. Result in results. I love it. I love it, too. To, to kind of piggyback off what you're saying, too, Alex, what's really cool about what we do and being kind of music experts is we're able to see something like, or have a client say, we really want it to be a tearjerker, and all of us have experienced that where we've seen a, t a trailer or we've seen a movie or we've heard a song that makes us cry. It's like that go-to song where you're like, I just want to sit in my feels and I want to cry, I want to feel the feels. And you can kind of know what that means and you can, in your mind, have a sense of like running that through your own kind of translator, which is a lot of what we do every day is running that through our translator in our mind of like, okay, when I want to feel that way or when I've seen this on a trailer or I've seen this in a movie, what did it sound like? Did it have strings? Did it have piano? So to Alex's point, like, like doing what we do on a daily basis, we're able to kind of like filter that through a translator and hear, okay, I know exactly what you mean by saying that because I kind of can understand what that feels like and then being a music expert, kind of pair that together. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. I was just running <laughs> at the mouth. I was, mm, it was horrible. All right, let's go to the next one. We got more, more. We want something we <laughs> anthemic. And again, this isn't, it's not the language of music. It's the language of someone who just knows what feeling they want, like his son. It's like, it's a feeling. Can you give me a feeling? Um, this one's fun. Picture a cinematic <laughs> sweeping shot as the protagonist rushes into battle. The music needs to get the blood. The grandness of the scene. Um, that's a little more descriptive. That helps. That helps a little more. Maybe you turn on Gladiator. Um, this, this one sort of works both ways, right? Like, that, you, that might show up in your inbox as, like, in a script. Like, this, you get the scripts and the boards, and then you say, okay, guys we, and gals, we need to make something anthemic. You know? Like, that's actually, you could brief a composer on that, yeah. too. So now we're... And we're changing now we're in a loop. around here. We're <laughs> in uncharted waters already. We're in a loop. <laughs> I'm going to say huge, like, timpani drums and, like, you know, some strings that are just like... Um, and obviously brass instruments. And that's just, you know, from my expertise. I, anyway, uh, next? We ready? I'm doing it. I'm clicking next. We want a track like nobody I has like, oh. ever heard before. <laughs> You'd be surprised how often this Yeah, this comes one up. comes around a lot. <laughs> for, for those of you who groaned, for those of you who groaned, um... <laughs> so, language of music. Um... <laughs> We want to track exactly like we've heard before, just by an affordable no-name artist, please. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know what else to say to that. That one's just great. <laughs> well, let's go to the next bit, and then we'll use this as our uh, yes. As our, are we in bucket zone? What are we? We're in buckets okay. now. Okay, I'm gonna see if my phone does what I wanted it to do. Okay, it's gonna be exciting. <laughs> okay. It oh, yes. Okay, so you get that email or that phone call and it's the client and they say, we want a track that nobody has ever heard before. Give us the feature, right? So us as problem solvers need to interpret that in a constructive way, right? And these are some of the tools that we, you know, sort of can help sleuth out with the client, with that creative, with that collaborator, whoever that may be. And so these are ways in which we all, we are sort of know these things, but when we start to plug them in. Um, so these are some ways in which we try and figure out what that thing needs to sound like. They have a vision in their head. Uh, they may not know it, or they may not be able to articulate it, or they don't have the sophistication in, musically uh, to verbalize what it is that we're being asked to problem solve. So. Um, things like genre, uh, prescribing a genre, and by all means, jump in here. At, you know, we're you know, throw things out at me. Genres: hip hop, rock and roll, R and B, folk, 
Jazz, thank you. So we can start to... Sorry? Dream Pop is a good one. Neo Soul, thank you. Love it. Lo-fi, there you go. So this is sort of maybe one where you want to start at because it kind of assigns a sandbox, right, of a sort of a, a common denominator of a palette. Um, we'll come back to references. Tempo, you know, is it... Do you is, need to be upbeat? What kind of scene are we working with here? Like, is it a kind of a slow moving uh, piece of media? Like, does the music need to match the slow moving piece of media, or do we want something fast and up tempo and in your face that does the opposite as a way to create friction? Right. Um, uh, pretty straightforward, right? Lyrics and message. Do we want lyrics? Right. What is the what? You know, what sort of message do we want? in the lyrics, right? Is it, what is the overall message of the film or the piece of media, right? What role does music play in addressing that and aiding in that overall vision, right? Is it just a supporting cast? Is it a main character? Uh, is it thematic? Uh, is it an important scene in which the music is going to answer the, epi the epiphany uh, of the character? Is this? So, you know, or is it an instrumental, right? Like, is it lots of VO and dialogue driven and we just need a bed, right? So these are sort of things that um, help with that. Mood and emotion, right? Like, is it a, what kind of emotion is in this scene? What are the, what are the actors or what, you know, the, the, in the thing, what are they portraying emotionally? Does music support that? Does it counterweight that? Um, Artists, do, do we want an, uh, uh, you know, what sort of budget are we working with? What kind of artist level are we talking about here? Um, do we want the artists in the thing? Um, instrumentation, yeah. Does, is it dr live drums? Is it what kind of production do we want? Do we want like a warm drum sound? Do we want, you know, more of an acoustic feel? Electronic uh, sounding things like more bleeps and bloops. Um, 808s. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to ask, I'm going to interject the spiel and just, I'm going to ask Alex the question that I asked him backstage because it's a fun one. And this is a good one. <laughs> BPMs. I have no idea what BPMs are and why <laughs> they matter because it's always, it's never the same. And here to answer the question of what the hell is a BPM anyway? I know it is beats per minute, but can you please help us solve the mystery of BPMs? I have the answer, everyone, but I'm not getting, no. Um, all right, the way that I was describing it backstage is, you should count like this, there's the kick, and then there's your main snare. That snare is two, all right? You're not going boom, boom, three, four, boom, boom, three. You, that's when you doubled it. Your song's really 70 BPM. Don't put 140 in. It's not driving. It's not fast. I'm not dancing my ass off at an EDM rave. I'm going, okay, I'm sad. I'm sad right now. <laughs> Don't be sad. It's okay. Um, so, yeah, but obviously there are situations like, um, and I don't remember the name of the song, but there's that band Fun, period. Um, their first, like, major hit, it starts in double time. You hit the chorus, and then it goes half time, and it's like, well, if I'm using the chorus for my show, do I tell someone that it's now nine, oh, I don't know how many BPMs it was, don't make me guess, 60. <laughs> Is it 60 or is it 120? I don't know. Obviously, that can get a little confusing. I would probably, personally, go with like the average of the overall song. Because, um, I don't know. In my experience, with the placements that I've gotten, they don't just stay in the chorus. Like They're going to use parts of it to build the moment, Like if you're making your production properly. Um, it'll build to like the moment that they're trying to get to. So they're not going to just sit in your chorus. So I think it's best to, like, if your verse and your pre-chorus and your bridge are all 70, do not call the song 140. Um, I think I answered it. Did I do it? Yes. Delightful. Mm. <laughs> and then lastly, references. Um, often this is the shortest way to get through all this stuff is by requesting a reference uh, or uh, 
providing a reference to them to respond to. Um, uh, thoughts on references? I could do my I could do my anecdote right now. I just talked a lot a minute ago, and we're doing it again. You guys ready? <laughs> All right. Um, references are really important for like if you're going to use references. Don't cast too wide a net. Um, I had an experience where a client wanted both Mariah Carey's Fantasy, which is, I think, from the 90s, right? Um, this Soul Wax remix of a folk song that was like in a post-industrial vibe. Like, it was like, boom, with the snare and the kick, but then the vocal was very pop. And, and I don't know, the bass was somewhere in between. Um, and then also MIA's um, Bad Girls, which has like, uh, like Middle Eastern vibes, but also maybe hip hop. And like, it just, none of it really went together. And you could tell that they were like, I want something cool. Um, so like, there's, I mean, that's, so it's important if you're the one making a brief and you're going to do references, try to bring it together. But also, it's still my responsibility to take that project and try to understand what they need out of those references. If, if we're not going to narrow it down, I have to talk to the client and be like, okay, what is it that you like about this song over here? Um, they're like, I really like the way that the bass is forward, um, and, and it, they, they built anticipation, was what they said about that, that remix one that I talked about. The bass was forward, it built anticipation. Um, and I was like, okay, so what is it about the Mariah Carey? And they were like, uh, well, the bass. And I was like, <laughs> just that you can hear it? Like, is it just that you can hear it? Um, and so, like, uh, it, it, they were like, no, I mean, we really, what we really like is this bass here. It was driving, though. And then Mariah Carey's fantasy is playful. And they wanted some sort of bridge between the two. They didn't want to feel like I'm being forced to dance, but they also didn't want to feel like they were doing some chill R&B song. They wanted chill dancing. Um, I don't know. And then the MIA... That was, there, there was nothing about it sonically that they wanted, is what I found out later. Uh, it was the vibe. It was the vibe, because the other two songs didn't have that aggressive female energy. It didn't have that, like, that swagger, that, sh like, self-assuredness in it. Like, they were fun to listen to, but that MIA had sass. Um, and so that, like, I have to, I have to talk to them and get that from those references so that I can come together and be like, oh God, it's still terrifying. Cause now I have to build this track that is not going to sound like any of these tracks and hope that it satis, it, it, it did, it satisfied their needs. Um, <laughs> but, but that's, that's, yeah. So your job, keep your references. Mm. And if you get them wide, find out what it is, what it is that they like. Use the language of music, get it from them. Is it, what is, is it the instrumentation? I just did that. Instrumentation, mood, tempo a little bit. Yeah, boom, boom. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I think something you said, Alex, that is super important is we have to, again, remember that not everyone is a music expert, not everyone speaks music terms, not everyone knows what a crescendo is or what dynamics are or what a swell is or, you know, I, I want the, the tempo to kind of change here or whatever. Not everyone knows how to speak that. And so to Alex's point, those references can be super helpful, but can also kind of, you know, make it a little confusing. And so it's on us to, if we're dealing with a client, um, to just kind of ask those questions and come at it from a perspective of like, I want to meet you where you are, so let me try to get a sense of what's making you feel that way, similar to what you were saying in the beginning with your son. It's like, what, makes you, what do you love about the music? And he's like, it just makes me feel good. It's like, cool, I love that, you know? And you can kind of keep pulling things out, like, well, do you like the drums? Do you like this? So I love what you said about kind of asking those questions, because I think that's super important when you're dealing with, like, your client. Yeah, I like that you said that, like, very specifically, meet them where they are. That's your job. Like, you can't drag them to you. It's not happening. It is your responsibility. Meet them. <laughs> uh, did we uh, miss any? Anybody uh, have a 
a, a bucket that they want to add that we can add later? To thoughts? Valuations? Any brave souls out there? I got a double thumbs up in the back. Okay, yes. Very, very good one. We should have thought of that. Yeah, one, one behind you, Michael. Is it clearable? That's, fortunately, that's a, yes. Budget. Budget, yeah. Sim those often go hand in hand. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, now we're gonna now we're gonna play a piece of I'll media. Set it up a go ahead. Before. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> hi guys. So I'm a marketing music coordinator at Netflix, and so I work on trailers and promos and marketing assets. So oftentimes we're talking with our marketers, and we really want to try and get a feel for how we can make the most impact with the campaign or the most impact with the marketing campaign. And so the one that I'm going to show you, I worked on Never Have I Ever Season 3. I don't know if there's any fans of the show in here, but yes, I'm a huge fan of that show. Um, so when they told me I could work on it, I was like, oh my god, yay. Because um, it's just such a fun show. But if you're not familiar with it, it's a kind of this really awesome coming of age comedy. It follows the protagonist, Davey, who is a first generation Indian American teenage girl. She's navigating high school. She's navigating relationships, friendships. And if you've seen it, she's not necessarily the most graceful in doing this navigating. Um, she can be kind of awkward and but this season, when we were talking to our marketing team, something that they were sharing with us is like, this is her moment. This is like her coming out. She's gone, have gone through season one and two, kind of fumbling a little bit through high school. But by season three, she wins the affection of Paxton, who is this like the attractive, quintessential, popular guy. So something that they wanted to really touch on was the debut of Daxton, which is their ship name, you guys. Um, uh, and uh, so they, some of the things that they kind of shared with us are like, the debut of this relationship is super important to us. Um, kind of wanting to show Davies kind of stepping into her own. She's got this newfound confidence. She's, all eyes are on her. It's all about her this year. She's walking with like a new set of confidence. So uh, I'm gonna show you the trailer without the music. Then kind of keep in mind some of the things that I mentioned that the marketing team kind of wanted to translate, as well as if you know the show also, kind of keep that in the back of your mind. So some of the things that obviously you can tell, they're in high school, they're teenagers, so I kind of want to like, this is like a little Q&A of the audience, I'd love to ask a lot of you guys, I know some of you in here are music supervisors and composers, if you, knowing the show and kind of knowing like, the big moment is they want to have this debut. Davy's whole thing is she's stepping into her own. What are some of the words that you might use if you were writing the brief? I'm just kind of curious, like a couple of hands, like if you were the one that needed to kind of find the right song, what kind of things would you think you would need to put in there? Like coming to age, discovering who you are. Yeah, totally. Anybody, what about like genres or anything? Yeah, I love that. What about genre? Does anybody feel like there's like a genre that sticks out? Yeah. I love it. What about lyrics? I heard some people say, like, I'm ready. Any other, like, lyric ideas? Newbie. I like that. It's coming. I love that. I love that. Like, like, no, totally. <laughs> All of that is great. Yeah. So you've pitched that track, right? Yes. And to our marketers, yeah. your marketing client says, it's actually nowhere near what I had in my head. <laughs> I, I know we discussed... Uh, suddenly contemporary pop that is speaking to the themes we discussed, but actually, you know what, I just, that's just not doing it for me. Um, how do you, what best practices do you have to respond to feedback that you get from a client or a collaborator where actually you've gone, done the diligence, um, but it's not working for them? Um, you may think it is, but it, they don't think it is. And, um, yeah, what best practices, or, or, or how do you navigate that part of the process? Because it comes up almost every job, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think what's really important is, like, you're working together. It's collaborative, and at the end of the day, we really want to create something that works, that works for everybody. And so I definitely never get offended if someone's like, ah, I don't know, like, maybe this isn't working. Like, that's what's fun to me about being in music is like, okay, cool. Like, I'm down to go look at some more music or go pitch more or send out another brief and see if we can get closer. I think it's just working together and kind of, again, to Alex's point, trying to get to 
meet them where they are and try and get in their head a little bit of what they want to try and translate or express through the trailer. Fortunately for me, for this one, this was around one search, so it was great. They were able to find something. But yeah, there are definitely times where, you know, you may send around one search and it's like, ah, nothing out of these like 10, 15 songs has really like worked. And so it's like, all right, we can go back to the drawing board. Tell me what's working, what's not working. And um, just kind of communicating that way is always really helpful. Alex, same question. Uh, when you're writing a song and um, it's gone from Cherise to you know somebody like a squeaky clean or, or whoever, and then you may maybe you get a brief if it's not direct. Oftentimes it goes through a channel. You're getting a track. You're you're writing to a brief. Uh, you you know you put together what you think is answering that using the tools uh, and other things. Um, your amazing talent that is undefinable. Um, <laughs> And the note back is, um, this is not, this is not working. Um, what do you, where do you go from there? What's your first thought? I will say, because I get to do it from both sides, like as a licensing agent, like someone saying this pack is not working for me, it is much easier to be like, that's fine. I've got other stuff. I've got producers. I'm going to make them go make some stuff. Don't worry about it. When I'm coming from the side of like, I made it, being patient, like taking a minute, because... Like you said, I did my due diligence. I might sit there and be like, ah, I listened to you real good. You know, there's a little ego in there. You gotta shove your ego down and kick it in the face um, because it's not going to help anyone. Um, so in that situation, I will, I mean, if they're willing, I, I, I love to have a conversation with them, sit down and be like, okay, is there anything about this that's working? Like, first off, like, am I scratching the whole thing or is there something about this where you're like, you know what, that element there, that's working for me. Can you build around that? That saves the day every day. That's fine. I can work with that. There are times where they're like, no, no, this is, mm. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And so I have to look. I, you have to, I guess you have to, you have to be able to take like your blinders off and like look honestly at what they asked for and what you gave them and what might be different about the two. What, what's different in your translation? Because like in regular translation, there are little differences like in, you know, Spanish to English, like, oh, wait a minute. So yeah, it could be in the d DNA of the track, which is something like the instrumentation or um, the, the B BPM or something like that, yeah. right? Yeah. The architecture of the track, or it could be something structurally, or it could be something like the attitude. Yeah. This is not hitting, right? And it was, I, I remember at a one, I'm thinking of one specifically where they, it was the one that I mentioned before with the three random references. Immediately after that, they said genres were interested in disco. So this is how, like, did, none of those were disco. <laughs> None of those references. But I was like, cool. They're like, they seem to be really into disco. I know I talked to one of them before on a previous thing, and they were into like the Dua Lipa sound. And so I was like, cool. Like, I'll find some some bass lines, or I'll I'll, I'll make some bass that like sounds something like a Dua Lipa thing, and we'll make it dancey, and we'll go from there. Hated the bass. They hated it. They were like, I don't like that sound. I don't know. And I was like, that's it. Okay. Um, so like that's that's the thing like I go okay so you didn't want that you know what I'm gonna I you can eat like the thing that I ended up doing was ignoring parts of the brief where I I, I just decided like I was like I don't think that you meant these from the from the first conversation and the second conversation you don't tell them this but I don't think that you meant these things I don't think that these are important to you and it sounds like this this and this is important let me go back to the drawing board. And you, yeah, you, you, the second conversation is very helpful. Like you gotta get that um, to figure out, cause it is, you get to compare notes. You go, okay, so you're saying something different here. Um, and it's only slightly different, but it is, it's different enough that I understand why you hate this. And then you can go and create something new. I think something else I was thinking about as you were talking is like, even the creative can change, which can be a reason why maybe you guys were all going one direction and it's like, yeah, we really want this kind of pop thing and then the creative kind of changes and it's like, well, do we really want to translate that? We actually want to express sadness or, or we want the audience to feel afraid and so if that creative changes, oftentimes, obviously, the music will have to change with it and I'm curious for you, Alex, do you ever get to see the creative usually when you're kind of, especially if you're composing something, like how often? That's how I prefer to work. Uh, actually, on the one that I was talking about, they did provide... 
um, footage for me to like. Act, that's my favorite way to work. Yeah, I prefer yeah. to have it because like that's the other thing too. Like even like I don't know. They'll give you a BPM and they'll say this is working for me. But like I'm watching my like instinctually like I'm feeling a, a rhythm when I'm watching the scenes right. change and I'm watching each frame and I'm like. We, it's not that you're, it's a little this way or it's a little that way and I can like I don't know you can feel it out and you can create these moments that I'm gonna uh, yeah it's kind of project dependent right yeah. and also yeah. kind of how much time do you have right, right. so you yeah. like the, I may send out a luxury car brand brief right uh, and that's all you're gonna get and I'll describe the scene or if I have more time or if it's the uniqueness of the project I will you know I'll send you an NDA and you know, sign that, and then here's here are the description boards. Here's the edit, you know, without music. You know, work directly to this because I feel like it will aid you in your. Um, it starts where are you at in the process, right? Like if it's if it's we we haven't even shot the thing yet, we're just in concept stage. It's like we'll just pull tracks, right? You know, yeah. that then, makes me think of another thing. So when when there's a situation where I don't get the visual, if you say luxury car, then I can go and find luxury car. Right. I, I, I can go find those commercials that already exist and see like what the energy is. Like, is it, oh, they did mo mostly orchestral sounds, but like they introduced this EDM beat underneath to make it seem a little more current or contemporary. Or um, if you just, dis it depends on how you describe the scene. Like if you do describe the scene, then I can go find references. I can go on YouTube and just be like this commercial, this commercial, this, and I'll, I can inform myself what, what you need. Or if it's a TV show, I can go on Tune Find and just literally go through every single episode that's ever been and be like, I listened to 15 songs on these last three episodes. I still don't have a vibe. Next three episodes. <laughs> and until I can feel what you're looking for. I think that's something that's really cool for people that are on this receiving end when I'm sending a brief, if you're receiving a brief, is like, if we do kind of outline the, the title of the project, take that initiative to go watch a couple episodes or like, Watch some previous trailers um, that you've seen from previous seasons if they exist out there, because a lot of the times it'll kind of maybe fall into that same realm, um, or you'll get a better sense of like a pace of maybe, I'm speaking specifically for marketing, but like a better sense of a, a pace of a trailer. Um, and that's always super helpful when you're sending stuff back, because sometimes we will send stuff, and I, I try to be as descriptive as possible using, you know, our buckets and getting down into, I'll even get down into BPM and tempo and you might get that one song, and it's like, oh, but that's a slow song. Why did you send that? And I need, like, that song. So I think it's also, like, really helpful if you kind of do what Alex is saying and, like, go look at previous seasons online and kind of get a feel of what kind of previous creative has looked like. It's, it's okay to pitch songs that are off brief, by the way. I think that's an important thing. Like, you know, it's not a rule. One sec. And you can couch it in the term of, like, a wild card, right? Or you can even bucket it out as off brief, right? If it's creatively inspiring to you and you feel like it works, you can pitch it. I feel like most times, you, you know, it's not going to get through, but if you're preempting it with that caveat, then your client is receptive to it in that place of like, okay, I'm just going to review this because it's different than what I've thought. And I, as a creator or a client, need to be open to receiving things that not necessarily are exactly what I asked for because then it's just going to be sort of a mechanical... Uh, it'll still be great, but maybe robotic might be mechanical, but that's where so sometimes where that magic happens, right? So, um, yes, question. I have a question. Uh, I'm curious, this clip um, here is for which market? Would you use the same music globally? I mean, this is a human show which I guess people watch in many countries. Yeah, this is where our main trailer. So this was distributed globally. Cool. Then we had another question. Yeah. You're, you're bringing up a very important part of this, thank you, um, a part of this top discussion, which is, okay, now you, that you've found your track, or your 25 tracks, how do you make that 
an effective, how do you make it effectively, I'm done, my English is failing me here. Uh, how do you package that up and share that to your client who's on the receiving in way so that it will be received effectively and constructively and have, it will, how will it be valued uh, the way that you want it to be, right? The, the heart, soul, energy that you put into creating this thing or finding this thing, the obvious loss of energy transmission that comes, that goes into, okay, now it's in a link in an email, right? That's just, it's just a horrific way of sharing music. Um, uh, sorry to all the email people out there, uh, you know, email.com. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Alex, uh, any best practices that you found that you'd like to share with um, how you package up audio to share to your cl your client, your collaborators? Yeah. Um, all right. So if I'm, can we? Which one specifically? Am I pitching to like you? You gave me a brief, and now I'm pitching to you. Is sure. That, okay. Cool. Um, let's say you you said one thing. Maybe there was a range. I'm using disco, so I can create sections in my playlist that'll notify you. Like, this is the driving, guitar-driven version of what you asked for. That, like, if I wanted to give you options. This is mm, the more electronic-leaning one, but it still maintains your, you wanted a hip-hop beat and a driving bass or something. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like so it's so, listening notes. Yeah, it's listening yeah. notes. It's, it's giving you a heads up of, you might not, I don't actually like to tell you what you might not like. I tell you what I gave, like what I gave, out of what you wanted, I'll tell you where you can find it in the thing that I gave you that you didn't ask for. Does that make sense? <laughs> right. Yeah, so like, so like, this is different, yes, but your bass is there, look, and there's, there's those drums you wanted, yeah. and, and the vocal sounds exactly like that, that re reference you gave me. So like I, I turn your eyes to the things that you want so that you can ignore the things that are new and fun. And are you doing that in your, um, for instance, uh, a lot of people use disco uh -huh. to share music. Are you putting those caveats and those notes within the disco message, or are you putting those in the email? Because it's important not to be long-winded Right, yeah. or else they're not going to read it. Yeah. Right, so uh, how do you... So it, 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 for the most part, I, I think I keep it less long-winded by doing both. So it's like a heads up, two to three bullets max, no longer than like five words each bullet. <laughs> so like if I have ca ca caveats or caveats, well, I don't know how to pronounce words. <laughs> I have a bachelor's in English. What am I talking about? <laughs> anyway... <laughs> um, no more than three bullets if I, like, and hopefully less than that, like, no bullets would be better. But if I need to tell you something and there's bullets, no more than three, and there's, like, no more than five words per, per bullet, uh, no one wants to read an email. No one wants to read anything. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't be long-winded ever. Keep it short. Try to, you shouldn't be long, if you're long-winded, then you're not giving them what they wanted at all. Like, if there's that much to say, yeah, if there's that much to say, don't send it. Say, I'm sorry, I don't have what you need. Um, which I feel works out way better because you're not wasting someone's time. Sharice, when you open up that uh, email mm -hmm. um, from, you know, a music submission, you, you'll get a ton, yeah. right? Um, what are you, to Alex's you know, point about how, what he puts into how he shares. Like, what are you looking for um, in terms of guidance from the provider um, as you're starting to put your headphones on and get into the music? Totally. I think what you said was actually really helpful um, because if I send something very specific and you are sending me, like, a wild card, which literally just happened the other day. I sent out a brief looking for something very specific, these kind of, like, trailerized versions of some for of songs and people were sending me I gave them a list of songs that I needed kind of a trailerized version of and people were sending me other songs and I was like okay but that's fine because what they were saying is like based on the songs that you sent me this one kind of felt like it it might fit in that and I love that because for me it could open my eyes to be like oh I didn't even think about that song it's actually really cool and I love that it's it's kind of got this feel that I'm looking for already so I love what you said about kind of like Maybe if you are throwing in a wild card or it is something that's not necessarily 
exactly fitting the brief, but it's still kind of in that same realm of the sound or the vibe. Um, I love, you know, somebody still being like, hey, I know this isn't exactly on the nose, but I thought maybe this could be cool. And you never know, like a lot of the times those are those tracks you're like, oh, I didn't even think about that, but that sounds really cool. Um, another thing to think about too, to your point, is like if we are getting a lot of submissions and a lot of songs, like it is really important that you can try to stay close, at least for me, to the brief, because we have to listen through a lot of things. So uh, if, if kind of listening through the first couple, they're not close to the brief, then it's kind of, it's kind of hard to <laughs> keep going through all the songs. So yeah, I would just say like, like you said, caveat when you need to, but definitely just staying close to the brief is super helpful. Cool. Can I jump on that? It's not just fo like also, cause, because so, so many hands went up for like, people who make music, so you might be pitching to a licensing agency. It's as important when you pitch to a licensing agency to stay close to the reference. Because, um, I mean, if I'm, if I'm friends with you, if I know you outside of here, like I might email you back and be like, please never do this again. I, I, asked, I, asked, you for, I asked you for party music for teens, and you sent me 90 BPM R&B, like, have you never been to a party? <laughs> So it, it's just like you, because I do, I have to sit there, I have a deadline. I gave you my deadline, right? And I have a deadline. I have to listen to all these. Why are you making me do, pitch this separately some other time. That's fine. I'm down to listen in my spare time. I've got a whole list of emails waiting for me to get to them whenever I feel like it. But right now I'm looking for this. Why do you hate me? <laughs> Any additions from the audience for, for, uh, for articulating uh, music that you're sharing to client? Yes? I, I think the thing that I, I receive music and I also submit music, and the one thing that drives me insane is that it could be a great song and nobody puts their contact information mm -hmm. in the metadata. Right. So not even their name <laughs> Sometimes not the artist name. Sometimes not even anything. Um, so, yeah. This is uh, an important one. Um, if you're sending a zip file, which still happens, it's fine. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with zips. Everything things download in zips. It's fine. That folder that you zipped. Right. Make sure that you're putting either your name or your company's name in the name of that folder, so that when I unzip the PDF or what the zip, what am I unzipping? I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. The folder, the folder full of things. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it says your name or it says your company name, and then I can I can go back and look at it. I know what I'm, whose music it came from and, and the company and, and generally have an idea of quality and things like that. Um, so that's an additional tip. Any other, uh, that, thank you. Any other? Uh, I want to add to that. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, if, if you're pitching for a specific ask, not only your name or your company name, but the, the ask, so I know what brief, because I might be working on three briefs, and you just sent them, I'm just like, what's this for? Is it nothing? Is it just Timothy's music? Okay, Timothy's music, and I put Timothy's music to the side, because I don't know that it's for what I'm working on right now. I don't have time for this. I mean, I would, to be fair to Timothy, I would, if I got a folder that said Timothy's music, <laughs> I'd be like, more power to you, man. That's That's interesting. I'll, go, I'll go through that. <laughs> I love that. I think um, something else I was thinking about too is like budget. Um, to your point, like a lot of times, I, I don't know how often you do it, but if I send out a brief and we maybe include the budget, um, it's important that it sticks with that. Um, or if you let people know like, I'm sending this knowing that this side might be a little bit more expensive or whatever, just giving us a heads up because that way we're not subsequently then sending it to a client or something and they're like, oh my gosh, I can get this for this? It's like, oh yeah, that's what they said. Like, <laughs> thankfully, from our end, being a music expert and having experience with seeing certain budgets for different songs, I'm able to have, I have discernment and I'm able to know like, I don't know if that's gonna clear for that. Um, so maybe I might kind of use my own discretion, but I do think that's important to kind of call out. If you think something like is just a oh, chef's kiss, it's perfectly gonna fit the brief, but it's a little bit more than what the budget is, 
I think that's always super helpful to just kind of let let us know. Like, I love this. I think this could work. Just full disclosure, it could be this. Um, it's always good. Question in the back. Like a centralized thing? To I actually have a, there's a, mm, I don't know how to share it with you is what I'm realizing. <laughs> I found the perfect website. It has, there's, um, there's a list of positive keywords, negative keywords, and neutral keywords. And it is, it's, it's, oh, I love it. Um, can you, it's, it's, uh, so it's part of our, that's my partner there. Um, <laughs> It's part of our, like, when we onboard a song, we actually say, please give us keywords if you need help. Here's a link. Um, so I'm hoping she can pull up that form, and then I don't know how we're going to share it with you, but we'll figure it out. It's, uh, I don't, I really don't. It's in, no, if you, if you go to the air table. <laughs> okay, you guys work this out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. What about the AI component for disco or You're asking, does Disco do a good job of populating the metadata when you import a track? Yeah, that's what far as music. I think it's the best thing we we have. Um, there's other other ways to uh, to get at that too, like Spotify. Now you can just put a, one song into a playlist, and then it'll give you recommended songs. So if you need additional references, that's an imperfect science, but it is algorithmic. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's another tool in the tool belt. Yeah, was there a hand back there? There's a hand that says "time is up." Q points. Yeah. I'm a notorious cue point giver as well. I think it's wonderful that you're thinking that exacting and specific with the music. Um, sometimes there isn't the time to necessarily lay something up and cue it up exactly like that. We'll, you know, we have to listen to 150 tracks. We'll just play 15 seconds of each, you know, and it's just, it just have to feel. Okay, well, these have to feel. I'm going to go give this more time, and then I, maybe I will. Um, Anything, any ads to that? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that's great. Like, again, I'm from a marketing perspective, like, I think that's cool if you can let us know, like, it really gets really big here or it's going to build here. And then I kind of have a sense, like, okay, what's, it's like we're kind of slow in the beginning, but then I can, you know, know to scrub forward a little bit and say, like, oh, wow, this chorus is really, like, getting into the catchiness of it all and the feel and the anthemic vibe and all that. So I, I do find that helpful when people kind of share time codes with me. Pre-edited tracks, yeah, sure. If you have a, if you're working in a 30-second format and you already did a music edit that is 30 seconds, it's uh, it saves a step. Often uh, the full track too. Maybe we, you know we'll probably chop it up and do something with it also. But that's um, not for every track, but in special occasions, certain instances when you if you absolutely we're receptive to that. Yeah. Yeah, if you if if Sharice has requested something with dynamics, right? I love that's a, a word you hear a lot, um, and that uh, what maybe what I give Sharice or Alex gives me or what whatever is one note or one kind of thing throughout, right? And you can tell that by the waveform. 
Um, but that's not answering a brief, right? Like you hear the word dynamics, that's something you'd ask for, like what does the structure of the track need to do? Like do you want it to start minimal and build? Do you need like a drop? Do you need it to have like some sort of big exclamation point of an end or is it sort of tra trailing out? Like these are questions that, you know, that dialogue that you're having as a musician, as a licensor, as a, as a client, to get to where you need it to be. Yeah, great point. The waveform is a way to just look at it and be like, well, that's our, you know. Sometimes you may not play a track of it. You can just tell from the waveform that, um, yeah. I have a thing to add that will go along with providing this website. Um, when you're putting keywords in your own work, make sure they're accurate. Don't try to cover bases that your song doesn't cover. It's not helpful for anyone. If I go to search for cinematic and I get a regular pop song, that, that doesn't make me happy. Why, why would, don't do that? So please make sure you're being honest in your keywords. N-S-A-I, San Diego, and then it's dot com slash list dash of dash keywords dot html. But you could just you got that. Did yeah. everybody get that? <laughs> okay, the letter N as in Nancy, the letter S as in snake, um, the letter A as in Alex Halton. Hi. Uh, the letter I as in um, igloo, and then San Diego, all one word dot com slash list dash of dash keywords dot html cool yeah awesome well i'd like to thank sharice and alex for being here and for providing the wonderful wisdom We'd like to thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Pleasure. Uh, we'll be here all week. Try the veal. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon and evening. Thank you, guys. <laughs>